liver secondaries or liver metastases denote cancer that has spread to the liver so that you get cancer deposits in the liver that have originated at other sites within the body. In this video we will find out about where these may spread from, what symptoms do liver secondaries or metastases produce, how do we diagnose this and a very brief outline of treatment. This is a cartoon of the gastrointestinal tract with the gullet emptying into the stomach connected to the small bowel, the small bowel emptying into the colon which goes all the way around and is connected to the rectum. At the back of the stomach is the pancreas and the liver is at the top right side in the body. All of the blood from these organs is channeled through the liver through the portal vein. Hence cancers arising in the colon, the pancreas, the stomach and the gullet are very likely to spread to the liver by detaching cancer cells and traveling in the portal circulation towards the liver and then finding a home in the liver. The liver unfortunately is also a favored destination for cancers arising in other sites such as the lungs, the breasts, the prostate gland in the males, the ovaries and the uterus in the females and the kidneys, urinary tract including the bladder. All of these may produce spread to the liver of cancers that have primarily arisen in these organs. Pretty much cancers arising anywhere else in the body may find a destination in the liver such as the bone, the thyroid gland or skin cancers. So what symptoms would we expect liver secondaries or metastases to produce? So these may be divided into local symptoms related to the liver or more general symptoms. Within the local symptoms the great majority of liver metastases do not produce any symptoms at all and they come to light when scans are performed or surgeries performed on the abdomen. If the metastases enlarge and beyond a certain size they will stretch the liver capsule which is the cover on the liver itself. If that sheet is stretched it will give rise to ache, discomfort, pain and nausea. Less commonly sudden acute pain in the right upper quadrant is produced when a metastasis has a bleed inside it and that is quite a rare event. If the metastases obstruct the flow of bile or that the metastases engulf the liver completely decimating it then patients may have a yellow discoloration or jaundice and less commonly liver failure. In terms of the general symptoms because liver spread denotes cancer that has progressed patients will have general symptoms such as weakness, lethargy, weight loss, loss of appetite, ankle swelling and sometimes abdominal swelling if there is fluid in the belly or if the liver metastases are too large. So how are liver metastases diagnosed? Liver metastases do not have specific symptoms as I mentioned before sometimes pain in the right upper quadrant may lead to scans being performed. Blood tests called tumor markers are often performed on patients with known cancers during surveillance and an increase in the tumor markers may indicate that the cancer may have spread. However, the commonest way of diagnosis is with scans. These may include the ultrasound scan seen over here showing deposits in the liver as a first indication that all is not well. More commonly a CT scan is performed and in this instance you can see the outline of the liver with a lot of deposits denoting metastatic spread to the liver. An MRI scan is more accurate in outlining the metastases in the liver in terms of their number and distribution as well as likely diagnosis as seen over here in this picture. Lastly clever scans called CT PET scans are commonly performed where two scans are superimposed on each other, one using glucose molecules as markers with a little bit of radioactivity which is picked up on a gamma camera and a scan is formed and a CT scan where when the two are combined you get a picture looking like this. In this instance this is metastatic spread of prostate cancer. The CT and the CT PET scans, specifically the CT PET scan has the ability not only to show the liver metastases but 
the likely primary site as well as spread throughout the body. And finally, if treatment is being contemplated and the diagnosis is uncertain, then an ultrasound guided biopsy takes tissue sample under local anesthetic generally directly from the metastases in the liver which are then analyzed under a microscope and a diagnosis reached. Before we get on to the treatment, it is important to realize that not all liver secondaries are equal in terms of our ability to treat them effectively. Hence, those that have a good record of treatment include cancers of the colon, tumors which are termed neuroendocrine, on which I have a playlist, and gastrointestinal stromal tumors called GIST, which arise anywhere within the GI tract. When these metastasize to the liver, aggressive treatment options, including surgery, may be considered. Less commonly, cancers arising in the kidney, the ovary, or the skin, which metastasize to the liver, these patients may also be considered for interventional treatments. However, other cancers such as the pancreas, the gullet, the breast, and the prostate, it is quite unlikely for these metastases to be treated aggressively with liver-directed treatments because by the time there is spread to the liver, there is inevitable spread beyond the liver or within the liver multiple sites. So that in trying to treat these cancers in the liver is of no benefit at all to the patient. And these patients are best then considered for whole body treatments such as chemotherapy or immunotherapy. Treatment for each patient is going to be individualized according to the cancer type, the stage of the disease, the type of the cancer, and the patient fitness. Commonly for colon cancer metastases and neuroendocrine tumor metastases, surgery is first choice, which aims at removing the cancers and cutting them out of the liver individually or removing part of the liver which bears the cancer. Where surgery alone is not deemed sufficient, ablation may be performed, which includes ultrasound-guided placement of a probe into the cancer, increasing its temperature and destroying it with heat. Microwave technology is often utilized. When surgery and ablation are not possible, there are several other options such as internal radiotherapy, where radioactive bearing molecules are directed towards the metastases, which then become resident within the cancer cells and destroy them with radiotherapy. Radiotherapy can also be directed from the outside, thus destroying the cancer. Sometimes cancers are also treated by infusing chemotherapy-laden particles through the artery and thus blocking the artery but also infusing it with chemotherapy. And lastly, the whole liver may be blasted with infusional chemotherapy with a catheter placed in the main artery supplying the liver. Finally, chemotherapy or its variants may be deployed along with these therapies all or on its own. Generally for non-colorectal, non-neuroendocrine metastases, systemic or whole body treatments such as chemotherapy, immunotherapy, etc. are deployed to contain the cancer. Since this spread to the liver denotes stage 4 disease, often patients may not be suitable for any of these treatments and it is best then to provide supportive treatment and palliative care. This is a specialist field in its own right, aiming at improving the quality of life and providing support. This completes this brief talk on liver metastases. If you have any comments, please do share.